it is a compulsory obligation on the peoples and the payment of which is the legal duty of the citizens it may be on their property indirect tax is nothing but the tax collected indirectly from the person who purchased the products or the services canon of elasticity is nothing but the principle of flexibility so there should be a flexibility for both the taxpayer and to the tax collector at the time of preparing this you know tax structure they should look into this aspect also hello everyone i am arun kumar lecturer in department of commerce and management idyashram first grade college the temple of excellence mysore dear students welcome to this new session session 1 on unit number 1 that is basic concepts of income tax yes dear students we are with session 1 and in this session we are going to learn the basic concepts of income tax and you all know i am talking about the subject income tax law and practice 1 which is therefore fifth sem bcom students who are studying under university of mysore yes dear students so many of you might heard the word income tax right so and your parents also paying some tax so by that you will be knowing what is income tax and why they are paying the tax to the government right so in general if you want to know you already know it but if it comes to the history of income tax what is income tax why we are supposed to pay when this income tax is started how the process will go on and what is the structure of income tax and what are the types of taxes we have under the income tax that and all we should have to know the basic concept with respect to the income tax so now here indian tax system and income tax law yes how the indian tax system we have and what are the in income tax laws we have in india so indian tax structure if you look into that taxation is the major instrument in the hand of the modern government to raise finance to meet expenditure done on various public services yes if the government want to spend on the public or if the government wants to meet the expenditures then they want some income right so that income is called taxation so by raising the tax from the public they are going to raise the income they are going to raise their revenue through that they are going to spend on the expenditures then you might ask a question or a question might arise in you that what the expenditures the government will be having yes government do also have some expenditures like paying salary to the employees construction of bridges construction of roads paying scholarships to students giving pensions to old age people and again you know construction of roads construction of drainages giving light facility giving other facilities to the you know public so they'll be having n number of expenditures so to meet those expenditures they required some money right you might again uh, have a question that anyhow they'll be having the control on printing of notes they can print how much ever they want bro so that is not the way there is a rule to print the notes they can't print the notes how much how much ever they want okay so here to raise the fund to meet the expenditures they are collecting tax from the people so in india in order to meet the expenditure the government the modern government is collecting the tax from the public and it is a compulsory obligation on the peoples and the payment of which is the legal duty of the citizens it may be on their property yes it is the duty of the person to pay tax on whatever the income they are earning whether they are earning the income from their property or whether they are earning the income by selling a uh, asset uh, their own you know personal asset or earning the income by you know winning some lottery or winning in horse race whatever the income they receive or they you know get on that income they are supposed to pay tax to the government and that is their obligation that is their obligation is nothing but their responsibility to pay the tax on the income whatever they earn so income and even it may be required to pay at the time of manufacturing and selling or purchasing a commodity tax constitute the major source of the government's income yes in not only the individual person have to pay tax to the government but also the manufacturing units or the person who sell the product they also have the liability to pay the tax to the government then the manufacturer is not going to pay or the seller is not going to pay the manufacturer and the seller they pay the amount later on they collect it from the customer so here the customer is going to pay the tax to the government if you are a customer then it's your liability or responsibility to pay tax on whatever the products you purchase or on whatever the services you receives 
from the manufacturer or from the seller. So the seller and the manufacturer first they pay the tax, then they later on collect that from the customer. So as an individual, you are supposed to pay tax to the government. And again, as an individual, if you're purchasing the products or if you're receiving the services, then again on that also you're supposed to pay tax to the government. And that tax is the revenue for the government. From that revenue, they are going to meet the expenditures, whatever they get towards the public. So that is how the income tax work and why the government collect the income tax from the public. And if you look into the types of tax, if you look into the types of tax, mainly we have direct tax and the second one is indirect tax. Okay, direct tax and indirect tax. So if you look into the indirect tax, what is this indirect tax? Indirect tax is nothing but the tax collected indirectly from the person who purchased the product or the services. For example, you go and purchase a shirt, okay? By paying 1000 rupees, you go and purchase a shirt. You will be you know, knowing that you are paying 1000, but that 1000 is inclusive of the tax amount. So that is called paying indirectly on the purchase of the product or on receiving of the services. So indirect tax is nothing but any tax collected indirectly from the person or from the customer who purchased the product or the customer who receives the services that is called indirect tax. So in India at present we have only one indirect tax that is GST. So earlier we had n number of indirect taxes but all merged together and all those called as GST that is goods and services tax. This is about indirect tax. So now if you look into direct tax. So direct tax is nothing but the tax collected directly from the person who earned the income. Okay. It is not on purchase of product or purchase of or receiving of services. It is on the income of an individual person or from a company. So any person who earns the income is liable to pay tax to the government that is called direct tax. Okay. Any person who earns the income is supposed to pay tax to the government that is called direct tax. For example, salary. If you are receiving salary, you are supposed to pay. That comes under direct tax. Again, in the direct tax, we have two types. One is corporate tax. Another one is income tax. So you all know what is corporate tax. So corporate tax is nothing but tax imposed on companies. So if any company is earning the income, then they are supposed to pay tax to the government under corporate tax system. And if it comes to income tax, so income tax is nothing but it is relating to an individual person. Okay, it is relating to an individual person or uh, it is relating to a Hindu undivided family like that. So under income tax, we have five heads of taxes. One is income from salary, income from salary, next income from house property, income from business and profession, next income from capital gain and income from other sources. So under this particular head that is under income tax, mainly we have five heads that is income from salary, income from house property, income from capital gain, income from business and profession and income from other sources. So this is about the types of taxes what we have in Indian tax structure. I hope all of you understood about the types of taxes. So moving on, the meaning of canons of taxations. So what is this canons of taxation? So canons of taxation is nothing but the principle supposed to be followed under taxation system. Okay, canons is nothing but the characteristics or the principles which are supposed to be followed while they are preparing the tax structure. So by canons of taxation, we simply mean the characteristics or qualities which a good tax system should possess. Yes. To call it a good tax system, a good tax structure, there should be a good qualities in the tax system or there should be some principles to be followed in the tax system. So in fact, canons of taxation are related to the administrative part of tax and Adam Smith first devised the principles or the canons of taxation in, 19, in 1776 in his book, Wealth of Nations. So yes. In the year 1776, Adam Smith, he mentioned about the canons of taxation in his book called Wealth of Nations. So then now, what and all the canons or what and all the principles are to be followed while preparing the tax system, while preparing the tax structure? If you look into that, the first thing is 
canon of equality or equity that is the principle of equality that means so there should be a equality while you are imposing the tax on the public that is called canon of equality for example if a person is earning less income then there should be a less tax to be imposed if person is earning more income then there, there should be a more tax to be collected so for less income people less tax for more income people more tax so that equality is supposed to be maintained while they are preparing the tax structure next canon of certainty there, that means there should be a belief about the tax system by the taxpayer whoever is paying the tax to the tax authority there should be a belief about the tax structure and also there should be a belief on taxpayer by the government and the canon of economy that means there should be a less cost of collection of tax at the time of collecting the tax if the cost of collection is more than whatever the tax is collected then there is no use of collecting the taxes so there should be a less cost of collection of tax so that they can increase their revenue and they can contribute more towards the development of the economy that is called canon of economy next canon of convenience okay canon of convenience so canon of convenience is nothing but it should be convenient the tax structure should be convenient to the taxpayer as well as to the tax collector that is to the government that means convenience in the sense it should be understandable it should be flexible to both the taxpayer and to the tax collector and the canon of productivity that means while they are collecting the tax it should be a it should be in a productive way so in the in, in that particular way they are supposed to prepare this you know tax structure next canon of elasticity canon of elasticity is nothing but the principle of flexibility so there should be a flexibility for both the taxpayer and to the tax collector at the time of preparing this you know tax structure they should look into this aspect also next canon of simplicity that means the law whatever they are going to make that law sh should be simple and understandable by both the taxpayer and the tax collector next canon of diversity that is if the person wants to change there should be option to change according to the requirement that is called canon of diversity and the canon of physical adequacy that is all about the financial aspect so how they are going to collect and what way they are going to collect how to maintain this financial aspect that everything should be proper and mentioned in the particular tax structure while they are preparing that tax structure next canon of flexibility that means again the collection of tax on paying of tax and the rules and regulations everything should be flexible for the both the you know payer of the tax and to the collector of the tax so these are all the principles or the characteristics of a good tax structure when they are preparing a tax structure which is given by adam smith in 1776 in his book wealth of nations so next moving further legal framework of income tax so the legal framework of income tax in india so the first thing is income tax act 1961 yes in this we are following at present we are following the income tax act 1961 law okay we are following the income tax 1961 law to pay the tax or to collect the tax or to impose the penalty or the fine and to know the process everything everything is described or everything is mentioned in the income tax act of 1961 and we are supposed to follow those rules and regulations if you are a tax payer or the tax collector you are supposed to look into this act so what this act says the income tax act 1961 is an act to levy to levy levy is nothing but imposing administrator collect and recover income tax in india yes this particular act that is income tax act 1961 is an act to levy the tax and to administrate and to collect and to recover the income tax this act is followed in india and the act is effective from 1st april 1962 yes it came into existence in the year of 1961 but came into force from 1st april 1962 it consists of 298 sections and 14 schedules yes this act contains totally 298 sections and 14 schedules 
द एक्ट हेल्प डिटर्माइन ए टैक्स पेयर टैक्सेबल इनकम टैक्स लेबिलिटी अपील पेनाल्टीज एंड प्रोसिक्यूशन द गवर्नमेंट एज बीन मेकिंग amendments to the act from time to time yes this act is going to help for the tax payer about how to pay the tax what is the you know how to make the appeals and how to calculate the tax liability and how to impose the penalties about everything this act is going to give you the information and the amendments will be done by the government according to the need this is about the income tax act 1961 next if you look into the income tax rules 1962 okay this is about how we are supposed to you know calculate the tax or the total income how to raise the appeals how to impose fine penalties everything it is described in the income tax act 1961 so what is this income tax rules 1962 income tax rules act as a supplement to the income tax act 1961 income tax rules are effective from 1st april 1962 the central board of direct taxes that is cbdt has the power to amend income tax rules for example section 10 subsection 13a into section 1 of the income tax act states that the house rent allowances can be exempted up to a certain limit rule 2a under income tax rules states how the limit can be calculated yes here this income tax rule 1962 is going to provide the information about how to calculate the incomes or how to calculate the deductions or exemptions about that aspect this income tax rule is going to give you the information and time to time the calculations or the changes requirement for calculation will be done under income tax rules 1962 you know act so this is about the tax structure in india or the legal framework of income tax in india next moving further definition of income so so far you get to know what is tax and why we are collecting the income tax and what are the principles we are supposed to follow and what is the legal framework of income tax in india we have now we are going to learn about the definition of income so what is the definition of income the definition is determine under section 2 subsection 24 of the income tax act 1961 so what is income whatever the sum earned by a person is called income so you will not we will not be having the exact definition for income okay whatever you earn that is called income so it includes that word income includes profit and gains if you are earning any profit and gain that is also your income and if you are receiving dividend the dividend is also your income and voluntary contribution received by a trust yes even though you are voluntarily contributing to a trust if the trust is receiving that is income for a trust and the value of perquisites profit on levy of salary yes whatever the perquisites you are going to receive with your salary perquisites is nothing but any benefit provided by the employer to his employee in kind he will not provide cash just to provide the services that is called perquisites so if you are receiving that services that is also called your income any special allowances or benefits other than perquisites included under section 4 that is also your income and allowances granted to the assessee it is also called income and the value of any benefit or perquisites obtained from a company so these all items are called incomes so any profit you receive any gain you receive any salary you receive any interest from a bank or dividend from a company whatever you receives that is all called incomes and those on those incomes you are supposed to pay tax to the government that is the definition of income under section 2 subsection 24 of the income tax act 1961 so with this i am going to wind up this session i'll come up with a few more new topics in the upcoming session until then thank you all have a nice day namaste